Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me on a Sunday afternoon dog stroll in a drizzly Wales. The weather's not very nice today. Well, it's brightened up a little bit now, so I've timed the dog walk appropriately. Boys just wandering up there, enjoying the sniffs and things as, as dogs do. With the weather being uh, what it is, it kind of got me on the train of thought about thinking about ML courses because it's just sort of, if it's not raining, it's not training and all that kind of stuff. I should have been running an ML this week just gone but because of obvious corona reasons that hasn't happened um, but hopefully in not too distant future they'll be starting again so fingers crossed for that but it made me think about doing uh, a bit of a video about that and uh, yeah I thought I'd do one on like 10 top quality mountain day tips right if you've got any involvement or have any plans to do the, the ML scheme you'll have probably heard the phrase QMDs which stands for quality mountain day and a lot of stuff gets chatted about them on the internet as to what constitutes a QMD and stuff. So I thought I'd just waffle through sort of, not what a QMD is, because that's all in black and white, I'll mention that in a minute, but actually uh, more like how to get the most out of them in reference to the ML scheme. So you'll join me in a minute, having picked up the dog's poo because he stopped to do a poo right on the path, uh, and we'll get cracking on with them. I was going to do a little walk and talk with this one, but my hands are getting freezing. It's really cold. There's uh, snow on the mountains again, not that you can see because it's so cloudy down low today. But I found a nice sheltered spot. I am getting a slightly wet butt because I'm sat on a wet rock. Um, but without further ado, let's crack on. Right, point number one. I might number them all, I might forget. But point number one, go and look on the mountain training website and read the definition of a quality mountain day. And then that just saves uh, hours of your life being lost to Facebook or the internet and reading some uh, ranty long posts on it about what is and what isn't a QMD. It's all really simple. It's all there in black and white. The only thing I want to add to it is just to say don't have to tick every one of those bullet points on every occasion you go out for it to count as a quality mountain day. More the merrier of those bullet points for sure and some you'll find that you do want to kind of tick pretty much every time but not everyone has to okay just keep that in mind with the mountains there's no like height thing it doesn't have to be like over 600 or whatever but they'll normally be like proper peaks but like i say just some common sense in there that's what us as assessors use we use our common sense so use your own common sense as well point number two though is one of the things that are on those qmds is visiting three different mountain areas uh great that's brilliant isn't it it gives you an excuse to go out and, and tick some days hopefully in places that you haven't been to before so it just gives you a really good excuse to go off exploring it doesn't say things like oh you must have been to scotland although obviously it's a great idea because it's such a, uh, a one beautiful area and a cool place to go but two it makes up a lot of our mountainous terrain in the uk so you don't have to but great experience isn't it and likewise if you're in scotland maybe think about going to you know the lakes or snowdonia it's just all a bit different we have a bit more farmland here and stuff rather than being right out into the wilds and sometimes that's the hardest bit isn't it getting through a farm working out where you can go without getting sold off by the farmer and stuff so it's all just different experiences and while you're out gaining all those bits of experience you get to you know all those things like you know learning new skills refining your kit working out you don't like that compass you do like that compass all those kind of things all right point number three go out in all weathers yeah um that's just building up experience it doesn't mean that every day out has to be absolutely disgusting you know i've timed this day out to be a bit drier than it was earlier but make sure you can cope with the bad weather i said in that previous point about like refining your kit and stuff well actually that that's a point that goes through many different ones of this list but you yeah, when you're out on that horrible weather day one can you cope are you sort of robust enough are you used to it but does your kit work for it can you do those bearings and pacings when you can't see anything it just really refines your your skills so much more and you just have to deal with it don't you and that's part of being an ml not every day you go out with a group is going to be nice and sunny they're probably in the minority if anything I, I should imagine really so go out and have those days and then firstly when you come to your ml assessment at some grim days it's just normal it doesn't throw you it doesn't add 
to any of the stress that will undoubtedly be put upon yourself not by me as an assessor or anything but you put pressure on yourself that's uh, human nature isn't it but two it means that once you've passed your ml and you're working as a superstar ml because that's what we're all after isn't it is being a really good ml at the end of it it's a continuous process but you want to be out with that group and just the weather just to you know play such a small role in in your headspace and everything that you can then concentrate on making sure your group are happy and safe and all that kind of stuff when you're out on those QMDs, sometimes uh, it's really easy to, to pick like a, a quality day. Like let's say the Snowden Horseshoe, for example. What a great mountain day that is. It's flipping brilliant. I never tire of doing that. But what you will find is there's not much kind of uh, navigation required. Once you've kind of found Crib Gork and stuff, you just follow the ridge round and probably follow the people around most days of the year as well. Of course, there's a bit if the weather's bad. But it's not like super fine nav for the most part so if you are on a day out like that great have it it's a qmd brilliant but why not when you get to say over the clueth side which is a bit quieter and stuff why don't you seek out some small sort of ring contours or other you know junctions of linear features whatever it might be sort of make an effort to seek those out it'll probably add a bit of time to your qmd but that's that's all good as well but you're just then maximizing what you're getting from every experience so you're really getting like full value for money i think that's really key obviously the examples i give are, are usually from around here because it's where i live and operate but you know that's the same as, as any other place in the uk as well there's a lot of different mountain areas in the uk and they've all got their different characteristics so let's say you were down in south wales in like the brecon beacons kind of area and the weather was bad and all that the navigation can be tricky because uh, it's kind of almost moorland like in a lot of places that so it's not so featured a lot of the time so that's great you'll learn a lot of nav stuff but compare that to a north ridge of trivan for example and it's nowhere near the same in terms of rockiness and stuff so make sure for some of your days you get onto that rockier terrain the more mountainous mountain kind of environment and then you'll be like super comfortable on it because you want to be at a point when you get to a bit of rocky ground with your group let's forget all the not planning to use the rope and stuff but you are on a bit of rocky ground you've got your comfort levels are so far above it that again you can just have all that headspace to concentrate on your group keeping them safe and giving them a nice time all that kind of stuff it might be that that's your thing and you're well into that rocky stuff and maybe the climbing background or the scrambling background is what you're all about or maybe you need to go the other way sometimes do get onto that sort of more navigationally tricky terrain again rather than following the north ridge of trivo when you are on that rocky terrain maybe take a rope with you uh, and even if you're not really uh you know not actually be laying your mate up and down you can chuck it over some spikes and do some knots and get the setups right and then even if they don't need a rope maybe do put them on a rope or stuff just to go through the process and think about the whole thing not just getting them up it or down it but make sure they get to and from the actual scrambly bit nice and safe and everything as well i do think it's a really good idea to get out with um friends who can challenge you a bit so that might be their qualified mls it might be their trainees like you it might just be that they're random people with some map sense and they perhaps can set you a challenge of you know you're in a certain spot they go right find me this ring contour find me this spot height find me this stream junction it works just fine going out on your own and picking out these points but your mates will pick something and you you might just think oh i wouldn't have actually picked that myself oh that's a tricky one i've got to go round this bit of cliff to get that. that's a big ml thing we can't always go straight there by them doing that it just a little bit of extra um variety isn't it really because you know you'll look at the map on your assessment you go oh i think the assessor might take us there and then they'll pick somewhere over there so it, it gives you that uncertainty and that sort of more randomness to it so i think that's a really nice idea it's a really good idea as well i think to use a gps when you're out and about so whether that's os locate or view range or whatever it might be a dedicated unit when you get to that point whether you've set it or you mate set it and you get there try and think of three points to justify you're in the right place from the surroundings you know using the contours whatever else you can see and stuff and once you've kind of made a decision that yes you are there look at the gps and see if that confirms it if it does confirm it brilliant that's great isn't it if it, if it doesn't confirm it it puts you slightly off then have a good think as to why remembering there can be slight uh, variances if you haven't got good gps signal or whatever um but it's just a really useful tool for confirming yes or no for it and so it's a really useful tool but just don't get reliant upon it because on the ml you'll be expected to do all of the navigation without a gps right so just map and compass type stuff and your mark one eyeball for looking around that's pretty flipping important isn't it so don't get reliant upon it but it's a great tool use it once you've passed your ml and you're out and about with groups I use a GPS a lot, they're flipping ace. 
mentioned maps then, mix up the scale a bit, right? For me, uh, I used to just use 1 to 25 nearly all the time. So when I came to my ML assessment, quite some years ago now, I made sure that before that I got out with my 1 to 50 scale map and just use that a lot because you know the nav you know in essence is no different but it takes a while to get your eye in if you're used to the 1 to 50 great practice with the 1 to 25 i'm a big fan of the harvey stuff these days so I use the 1 to 40 quite a lot um, but if i was going through to assessment i'd just make sure i'd practiced a lot with each different scale of map because they all have their slight nuances and like i say just getting your eye in really so make sure you turn up to assessment really happy with all that kind of stuff on the navigational theme, just make sure you, uh, this is kind of not quite tied into QMDs, but I wanted to mention it anyway. Just make sure that you do go and do some Porvis nav uh, navigation. So I hope that might have been tied into another point of like getting out in Porvis, but perhaps you need to really refine it. Just go out at night and stuff and ignore the QMD for a bit, but just make sure you've practiced the whole syllabus during those QMDs, or if you haven't within the QMDs, go and do the extra on top really to really refine it. My last point I wanted to mention was just enjoying it. It's so important, right? We want ML people to be just like really passionate about the mountains and it, uh, you know, just to be the norm of what they get excited about doing and going out and, and just being in the mountains, doing quality days, regardless of making them a QMD, you can get a bit sucked into going, oh, I can't do this day because it doesn't quite tick the criteria or I've done it too many times before. Just still go out and enjoy it and, and log it, but make sure that you have got those 40 like genuine quality mountain days on top of that 40 you'll probably have extra days maybe extra quality mountain days more the merrier but maybe you've just got extra days logged that aren't really qmds but you still learnt loads so put them in as well because i want to see them as an assessor but sometimes when we're working through award schemes it can kind of it's there's a danger of it detracting a little bit from your passion of being out and about so just get out and enjoy it and if you feel like you're getting sucked into like qmd ticking just forget it for a bit go and have a nice day out whether it's something you've done before a new area whatever just get out and enjoy the mountains the best mls that we see out working uh, in the hills they're the ones that absolutely love it right if you don't love it it's net you're never gonna uh, have that real spark and be able to you know real infuse your clients uh, to the max all right so love it that's really important isn't it there'll be some things uh not on that list that people will say oh why didn't he mention this as a top qmd tip it's just my list of 10 or 11 whatever it ended up being uh well, of course i have missed things put it in the comments below great and share those top tips with other people or the comments on facebook where i share stuff as well um you know share your experiences this is just my little bit of experience as well isn't it but hopefully it's useful do run a lot of ml courses and i've been a qualified ml and, and above for a long time now so hopefully there's something to get you thinking. Please do fire away with questions. Uh, you know, use the comments below to ask those questions. I get back to pretty much everyone unless I forget, but 99.9% .9 of people get an answer from me. So do put those comments below. I'm really keen to see them. Click that like button, smash the subscribe button, fire us on Insta, fire us on Facebook, all the things I ask every time. Massive thanks to everyone who's used the buy me a coffee link, especially because that has been like mind-blowingly helpful to the channel. I'm just, I'm so appreciative. It's amazing. Thanks very much for watching. Chuck those comments below, ask those questions, all that kind of stuff. More videos coming up very soon. Bye.